Welcome everybody and thank you for coming to see me tonight and also thank you to everybody who's watching on the Cathars Return Nick in the Curse of Rome group uh, for my talk here tonight at the Enfield Healing Centre um, on quantum healing and light body technology. So, quantum healing and light body technology, what on earth is that all about, you might be thinking. How is everybody tonight anyway? Everyone feeling good? Yeah. Everyone feeling relaxed? Yeah. Not too much traffic on the way? Um, yeah. Good. Good. Well, hopefully the work that, I've, that I'm going to share with you tonight won't just be about me talking to you. Hopefully I can make it in some ways somewhat interactive so that you can also benefit on some ways in getting a healing experience from this interaction side. That's what I would like to achieve anyway. Is everyone up for that? Yeah. Good. Would anybody like to try out some of my quantum healing stuff while my talk is starting? Okay, well I've got some things here which um, I use in my, my light body uh, technology practice. Uh, these are lasers and they're very good for dissolving and neutralizing polarity, which is another word for karma, for clearing pain and for re releasing stress from people. And I've used them for quite a while now, several years now, and I found them to be you know, part, of, part of really what I do really in my quantum combination therapy. So if anyone would like to have a go with these while we're setting up, I'll just come to the front and don't be shy. What you can do is just put them on your tummy. Okay. Okay, and they run for 20 minutes. Okay, okay. There's one for you. Yeah, tummy on here, wherever you feel. Okay. Then put it on your ankle. What I'll do is I'll set relief up for you. Okay. Okay, have a go with that. Let's just see what you've done. Okay, okay. I'm going to test it. That's normally the best one for you. And, okay. and as well. There you go. It's clear. Great. I'm going for you. And I'll touch you. It's about cellular memory. On to a book. you a little bit of juice. It's like you're cleaning and this. Is right out. It's actually just nice to be in the front. When you finish and have a When you're feeling. You want to bring it back to all. So someone else, okay? Go. Okay. There you go. Okay. These are lasers by K. And from part of what I do, the way the quantum they form, part of what I do so as a different types of heat, I actually entered an umbrella mini dome for what I think, so, which is create quantum turbination therapy. And that basically involves many different modalities. But actually, what does the word quantum mean? And what is quantum healing? It's one of those terms that you know, a lot of new age people talk about. That, and you know, people often laugh and it's one of those goo goo woo woo terms. But it actually does have a meaning. And I'd like to just explain a little bit about what that is and what that means to me and how I've utilized those ideas in my work, particularly over the last 20 years. Um, in 1997, um, I was interested in quantum physics and I started to study quantum physics and I was also a healer because I worked doing Reiki and stuff in, in, from the mid-90s onwards. And um, one of the things that fascinated me, I, was, I would always hear about scientists trying to find a unification theory for the universe, to try and get some kind of concept or understanding about how the forces of the universe interacted and how we could have some kind of empirical answer, if you like. Um, that would explain how things work in the universe. Uh, and I hadn't quite got their head around finding that answer because there seemed to be different dimensions or different paradigms of thought that operated at different levels of scale. Now, I've been studying the Jewish Kabbalah now for well over 20 years, probably about 25 years actually. And I've always found it a system that resonated very, very much with me. In the early 90s, I went to see a psychic and she said to me, Simon, you need to study the Kabbalah. And she was absolutely right. And it's formed part, it's the kind of cornerstone actually of the Western magical tradition. And I am a magician. It is the cornerstone in many ways. Uh, it's the Jewish mystical system. Okay, And it's fantastic because you don't have to be Jewish, I don't have to be Jewish as it happens, to study it, um, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Um, but it's a very useful system to understand how you can connect different types of ideas about the universe, different types of ideas. 
And so I thought to myself, well, this thing called the Tree of Life, which is the map that you have in the Kabbalah, it's supposed to be a map of the universe, a mystical filing cabinet, if you like. I thought, well, if I look at this Tree of Life and study it, maybe, just maybe, I'll get some insight into finding this unification theory understand what it actually means, because there are these four main forces that scientists talk about. And the four main forces are gravity, big, uh, electromagnetic fields, okay, uh, atomic force, and quantum gravity. Also, so there are four main forces, and the dichotomy that appears in this case that they have me on the stand, look at the four forces that I have I kind of had a logical tree of life. I did a lot of meditation that night. I was doing a lot of magic work in the land in the 90s. Yeah, I had a 97. And um, anyway, one day, Epiphany Mo inside. Epiphany Mo. John here had the pin. I put in the line. Epiphany. I get lots of it. It's like, what? <laughs> Suddenly. Anyway, this it just was. He just, I looked at it. just the super click. And what click? Superb or something called the tree. Anyone here? I'll try it. I'll know. The 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 tree, the tree, I started the car. Thinking about a couple of people, anyone sitting you at the back? Oh, um, oh, Colonel Tribe, practically. So, is uh, the subscription really based on what we call it? A description of the infinite of God's head. Okay, two aspects of God's to it. There's the God's head aspect, that's which is pain and solid for names suffer. Where are that? The maybe at the back? Of three zeros. Okay. There's the absolute zero, there's the, 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 the purely passive aspect, and then there's the active aspect. But both of these aspects exist outside the manifest world, outside the world that you and I taste and touch, outside the world of frequency and, and, and flow that we experience in our daily life, or in fact on any level of frequency and flow. The idea is that these two aspects of God, of Godhead, uh, the, the passive and the active are unmanifest, part of the ineffable. And yet within that unmanifest state, they still have a kind of anti-form, if you like. Now for me, the realisation, what just clicked with me, when I was reading quite about quantum physics, is that actually the quantum world, the world that scientists just don't really understand, the world that even Einstein himself, who, let's be honest, was a very lateral thinker, was kind of shocked when the, when Erwin Schrödinger, the physicist who came after him, started to come up with some of the descriptions of the quantum world. It was so out of this world. It was so outside the perceptions and paradigms which we're kind of used to experience through our sensorial apparatus, all the models that we might create to explain things that we can't see. It was so outside those fields of reference. That is shocked Einstein. He found it very difficult to actually assimilate. I got the idea, basically, and realised that the quantum world, the world of source or potentiality, was the world that existed in the tree of life above the abyss. Above the abyss on the tree of life. The abyss, by the way, I also identified as something called Planck's length. Now, Planck's length is occurs about 14 powers of 10 below the size of an atom, named after the physicist Max Planck. Anyone heard of Max Planck? Okay. Um, 14 powers below the... Let me give you an idea, some idea of the scale. Okay. Um, if you take the, the size of the sun, and you go 22 powers of 10 below the size of the sun, okay, you get about the size of a human being. That's the level of scale. Remember the sun is very, 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 very much larger than the earth. So that's the level of square of 22 times of 10. Then from a human being down to the size of an atom, that's another 22 powers of 10. So another massive change in promotionality. It's very, very, very difficult just to get some of us to consider of that level of scale. And then you drop down from the size of an atom, another 14 levels of 10. We call them 15 levels of 10. And so I'll get to a critical last point that various plant discovered that something will be puzzled, unusual happens. I'm going to go to the part of the physicist. It's not just, I don't want to too much more. Positive physics. The fool is to try and keep it simple. What actually happens about the power of 10? 
Where's the anatomy happen? What's well, fortunate in physics that other side? The small thing is, I, what happens with the thing we want to find it? All of the greater small amount of energy, what's why they did to identify it? But the actually need so that the inverse proportionality. Okay. okay, so that's cool. The smaller you get, the more energy you need. And as you get smaller, smaller and smaller, and you need more, 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 more energy. But you get to this critical more mass point, this juncture, which is plus length. And at that particular juncture, about 14 pounds of ten below the size of an atom, um, the amount of energy we need is so big that the reality created by that energy is instantaneous. In other words, whereas at this level of scale, you know, I might, you know, have a thought about throwing a bottle at Tim's head. I wouldn't really do that. But if I decided to, okay. First of all, I have to actually think it, and then I have to do some things, and I have to actually physically start. It's not going to happen instantaneously. There is a gap between the thinking and the manifestation, okay? At that level of scale, at the level of the quantum world, that gap completely dissipates. The thought creates the reality instantaneously. In other words, we leave the space-time continuum. We leave the space-time continuum at Planck's length, below Planck's length. And I equated that in 1997 with the supernal triad of the Tree of Life. And little was I to know that that epiphany moment, that eureka moment, was to strongly affect the course of my life subsequently. I didn't realise, but looking back, I think, Christ, that really was an important discovery and understanding, because it set me on a path to researching, developing, experiencing, expanding a new system of teachings. And those system of teachings have gained a momentum, particularly in the last three years, accelerated so much that there's a whole new healing system that I am birthing now for planet Earth, okay? Called the Harmonic Resonance Healing System. And that healing system has emerged from a combination, really, of experience. Because at the end of the day, anyone can talk any old nonsense, right? We hear them on the TV all the time, the politicians can promise anything. At the end of the day, I'm interested in results, uh, because if you don't get the results, what's the point, you know? And for me, getting results is very important, and for me, quantum healing is a way to get results which, we may dis which others may describe as miraculous. Okay, we've heard about this idea of miracles, what actually do they mean? Well, a miracle is something that, you know, generally is considered to be something outside the normal experience, or at least outside an experience that we have not had. So people talk about the miracle of childbirth. Who here has seen a baby being born? Right. You've actually physically seen it. Okay, quite a few of you. I have two. Have you ever seen it? I've got you a few. You're a doctor, that's right. I'm very teasing. It's, an, it's a miracle. When you see a baby, that's all born it's like, oh my god, and three of my each children here, God's man. It's a, it, well, that's why my time was just very, it's something really. I've never seen a miracle. Because that's a miracle. Normally experiencing a miracle, you can know before. So, in daily local, with a miracle is something that, uh, but it's outside for normal experience. Yeah, me, that it's in my considered in miracle. Okay, so far, I have witnessed what to is when some of them have cancer, for example. It's just tumours, and they go for a doctor. And the doctor does the MRI scan or some kind of scan, whatever it is, and they have discovered does and sees that you can put tumours in there. And then after working for four or five days, healing the tumours suddenly disappear. That's a kind of a miracle. Well, yeah, I suppose it is, isn't it? It all depends on your paradigm of perception. It all depends on the paradigm. One of the things that might make that seem to be a miracle is that it happened over five days and people have known about tumours disappearing but to disappear so quickly would seem like a miracle. So often the miracles are associated with the time aspect, the fact that it happens very quickly or something amazing happens very, very sh in a very, very short period often makes it seem like a miracle. Would you agree with that? Yeah. That's the miracle of quantum healing because with quantum healing you see it's really about accessing the place that is no place, the time that is no time, so that we can enter another field of sentience and collapse, dissolve, 
neutralize, negate things that are unpalatable, difficult, and re-emerge like a phoenix from the ashes with a new reality. That essentially is what I do and the work that I do. It's not quite as simple as that. There is a whole complexity around it. But in simple terms, what I attempt to do with people is to dissolve realities that aren't working for them. That might be a physical distress situation. It might be a tumour. It might be they have fibroids, IBS, or some other condition, whatever it might be. It might be an emotional condition. And I work to get very, very, very fast results. Sometimes people come to me and they've, you know, they've been to therapists for 10, 12 years. I'm not knocking traditional therapy or cognitive behaviour therapy or any of the other modalities. For me, it's about how quickly they work. I know with Freud, he said, you know, my therapies are free for rich people. You need two to three hundred sessions to come. You know, and of course, if you had a lot of money and you had a lot of time and, you know, you didn't mind spending it, then Freud would be a good person to go and see. He didn't really get involved, though. He wasn't an interventionist kind of person. And Carl Jung's work was somewhat different to Freud, even though he was one of his pupils. My work is also somewhat different to Freud's work, I can assure you. I am an interventionist. So I go in there and I kind of tell people what I think <laughs> needs to happen. I'm not going to like pretend. I'm not going to just let them find their own answers if I feel they're making a big mistake. It's a little bit like having a coach, football coach, when they're training somebody. If you make a mistake, they tell you where you're going wrong. That way, the learning curve can be shortened. But it's not just about me telling someone. It's about information that I get from sources. It's not about Simon Hinton thinking, thinking he knows best. It's about accessing information outside my own limited cognitive experience. It's however wide that experience may be. It's that, that can be true for you, but it's actually connecting to some friend that's outside, talking about the normal frack of reference. And I'll be talking a little bit about me, how that connection can be made. So it's not just our mental growth connect, it's not just our thing. To we actually can you outside and tell ourselves we tap into stand universal love, agents, wisdom, I call it any relation of whatever you want to claim, it's a combination of those things and to find to end a result something where and and get feels better up with some L that the person opens their heart to feel mind gets worse a better life. And that's the perfect part there, multi here and live like that as a So I've created Number of different modalities. I didn't know the term called It was kind of a morass, really. From 206, I created a thing called quantum power program. So, quantum power programming. Has anyone here done NLP at all? Anyone know about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming? Okay. Well, I studied a bit of NLP. I found it very useful, actually. I was an NLP master practitioner a few years back, probably about 10, 11 years ago. And I found it was very useful to pull things together and give me a sense of why I was good at certain things, why I wasn't so good at other things, and to give me choice, because choice is power. With NLP, uh, we tend to use the space-time continuum as our, as our point of reference. Okay, So we tend to use spatial sorting and we tend to use different things through our general, our generally our sensorial apparatus to understand our position in life and communicate effectively that position, to try and communicate ideas. Nothing wrong with that, very, very useful. Quantum power programming, by contrast, um, is really a little bit like, if you know about NLP, it's a bit more like new code, actually. Um, does anyone know about new code? Anyone studied new code? Okay. It's a bit more like that. It's a little similar to that, but it's not quite the same. Essentially, with quantum power programming, what I developed was a system whereby we could consciously exit the world of space and time. And I came up with another epiphany, <laughs> epiphany moment, uh, about 10, 11 years ago. And I thought the quantum world, I felt that there's this quantum body that we have, which is our direct access to source. And it's outside the physical body, but it's also inside. It's like the dwarf self, the hidden god. And uh, I thought, you know, we can't see the quantum world. We can't see it, it's too small. We can't see it, it's not possible to see. Um, we can't hear it, definitely we can't hear the quantum world. Uh, we can't taste it, and we can't smell it. 
But then I came to a realisation. We can feel it. We can feel the quantum world. You might think that sounds a bit weird. What does he mean? That bloke up there saying you can feel the quantum world. What's he talking about? Well, the power of kinesthesia. I'm naturally a kinesthetic person, for those that don't know me. I feel first, that's one of my default sensorial apparatus, feeling. I tend to feel things. And what I discovered is that actually, for what I feel, was that we can actually feel our way into this world of source, this world of potentiality, this unmanifest <coughs> potential which exists outside our normal frames of reference. We can feel our way into it. We can access it by the power of feeling. And how do people do that, you can ask? Well, first of all, let me give you a little metaphor if you don't really know what I'm talking about. I think I'm talking a little bit weird. Okay. Some people do that. Right, okay, I'm kind of happy to it. It's a little bit like having a computer system. Who put up here has got or a computer. An iPad or a much older view, right? access to a kit or set an iPad or my phone, right? Most, most of us, every time other kind of tablet, right? Now, but just out pretty body put that about how code or how how knows, but I kind of loosely understand what it's about. The code is the underlying operating principles that make the computer work. So before we had the beautiful graphic user interface, we had code. So what happened with a chap called Steve Jobs? Who's heard of Steve Jobs? Pretty much most of you. And another chap called Steve Wojnik, Woj, Woj, we call him, in the 70s started to develop their own computer systems. And what the thing that Steve Jobs did, which was so amazing, was he was really wanted, he was a visionary, and he just knew that there was a way to translate the information that was, to be honest, for most of us here, we can't read code, we wouldn't know, wouldn't know it from the head or tail. Of another language, it is another language, to translate it into a form that we can understand and appreciate and, and uh, make some sense from. So that's what's been going on in the computer world for the last 40 plus years. So now they've developed it to such an incredible level that we can go on an iPhone or a tablet and we can just go through all different sorts of applications. All of those applications, what they actually do is they translate the code into meaningful, understandable, Bits and put the laser down here. If anyone else wants to have a go, please just come up and have a go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. One for you. That's for a week. Here we go. One for you. That's good. Just go right, right here. Okay. One for you. Hello, everybody. Cathar Group. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Sorry, I can't give you a laser, but hey, <laughs> you can feel the light. Thank you. Okay. So the, just coming back to the point, the graphic user interface is the interface where all the dots, all the binary code makes sense and comes into reality. Now, our interface, if you like, is our, sensor, our sensorial apparatus, okay? How we see things, perceive things, or how we're taught and learned to see and appreciate information. But underneath all that, there is another world, the quantum world, okay? And that's a little bit like the world of code of the computer. There's an underlying matrix, a massive matrix of information and stuff. And with our filtration systems, or our sensorial apparatus, we develop ways to appreciate and understand information and ideas. But let's be honest, our eyes only see a tiny, 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 tiny little bit of the, of, of the spectrum of light. Our ears only hear a little tiny bit of the, of, the, of the sonic potentiality, you know, because if we heard it all, we would just be deluged. So we have to filter all that stuff out. The quantum world, then, is the, is the source, okay? The quantum world is like the code of the computer. It's the underlying operating matrix of stuff. And we can access that at will. That's what quantum power programming was really about. A way to access that. Why would we want to access that? Because there's something we're not appreciating or enjoying on this level of reality. If something's not working in your life and you want to change it quickly, how are you going to do it? Most people suffer from limited thinking. Most people, from my experience, myself included. Only when we let go of the limited thinking and then enact behaviour methods aligned with that, 
Do we have a chance of changing our reality? If we keep thinking the same thing, we're going to keep getting the same stuff. You're asking yourself development teacher. It's basic self-development stuff. Change your thinking, change your attitudes, change your behaviour, and you can get different results. I've extended those ideas a little bit further, actually. And I've created something called the quantum law of attraction. Because I looked at traditional law of attraction and I thought, well, you know, it's got some useful stuff in it. Um, but it doesn't work for everybody. So I developed a way to help people access their true nature. Now I'm going to have to be honest with you, I have certain beliefs that are built up now after doing this research and all this work for 25 years. One of the beliefs that I have quite strongly, and I'm willing to be told that I'm wrong and someone can show me an alternative, I believe there is a higher order playing out all the time. I believe in cosmic, occult or hidden forces that affect the realities which we experience all the time. So, for example, if you do the law of attraction and you're not aligned with those high, higher, that higher unfolding, you can do all the visualisation in the world and it ain't going to work. So the quantum law of attraction is really about stepping outside also of our limited perceptions, however honest and, 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 and how much we want something and how dedicated we are to help people actually find a reality that is part of what I call the true soul purpose or the Dharma. Everyone okay with that? Does anyone like the idea of that? I feel that if we can be authentic, truly authentic, then we can, we're living our truth and the creative force will power through us effectively when we let go of those things that aren't working for us because they're not aligned for us. Some people may wish for a Ferrari but nothing against Ferrari, believe you me. But it might not be part of their soul path. Someone might wish for a partner or a big house. And actually, there's other things they need to learn first. So it's important from my perception that people get connected to a gateway to source or the quantum world. Or if you want to call it God, grand order of design, call it that. Godhead, goddess, supernal triad. They're just different names, they're just descriptions. I think they're the same thing. Okay, but it's important, I feel, to not have a limited view and to open one's heart to our true nature. Because the thing is, what I've experienced and understood is that a lot of what, as human beings, I feel, again, I'm gonna just share some of my beliefs, that we have been subjugated for thousands of years in general, pushed down against our natural flow of being, our natural, where we should be. We've had that subjugation against us in different ways. Politically, religious subjugation, there's been a lot of that. Even in modern times, pharmaceutical companies, I'm not saying they're all bad, but the way a lot of these corporations run is a little bit far from ideal from my perspective. The way we're taught at schools, a lot of it is very much boxed and compartmentalised, doesn't necessarily deal with the person's true soul path. Nutrition, I could go on and on. The banking system, we have been subjugated as a species. Okay, There's been a big control mechanism against us. And the work that I do with the quantum field is about liberating us so that we can think freely, that we can behave naturally, so that we can connect to our true highest nature and live a life in the flow. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds wonderful. Good. Right. That's really what my work is about. So sometimes when we see people, and people come to me, like, you know, somebody came to me today with cancer or somebody came to me today, you know, I'm always looking... When I'm doing the quantum healing, I'm not just saying, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to offer the magic wand. Oh, Simon, you're such a great healer. Just let it go. You're such a great, you're a great healer. You're a great healer. You're a great, we're all healers. And if you don't believe me, cut your arm, cut your finger. Provided you haven't got, um, you know, you're not a haemophiliac, your, your, your body's going to heal, right? We do heal naturally. We are self-iterating intelligent systems that automatically heal, okay? but we can take that automatic healing and we can take it to the next level. So that we can not just heal ourselves, but expand our being. And I personally believe that being has been subjugated. So my work is very much about liberating people. And I'm always looking for the underlying causes of any dis-ease. It may not always be somebody's 
fault. It's not always about that. But if somebody's suffering from something, I like to look at the potential combinations that have created that scenario. And from my experience, and I'm not a doctor, I know a few, I'm not a doctor, but from my experience, it's anecdotal, I accept, most dis-ease occurs as a result of a combination of factors. It's like a road accident. A lot of road accidents happen, an unfortunate combination of events. Well, I was driving down the road, it happened to be wet, there was a car coming the other way, somebody stepped out, I couldn't stop in time, I swerved the car, they couldn't stop in time, it was wet, blah, 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 blah. we had a crash. Combination. If, it, if one of those things had been missing, it probably accident may not have happened. But it's often a combination of events that creates or creates the environment for disease to happen, like a genetic predisposition to a particular um, uh, malady. Number one, for example, stress, tension, fear. Uh, with the lasers, for example, one of the things that I found very, very useful is to clear people of fear and clear people of stress and anxiety and tension. When we let go of tension and anxiety and fear, when we relax, truly unwind, then the body is an amazing place to heal. I have had people come into me many times. But some of them have spent a hundred thousand plus on their back pain. Just get them to unwind with the combination that I use, and they call me the next day and say it's a miracle, the pain has gone, or it's like I actually slept last night. I can't believe it's the first night I had a proper sleep, eight hours sleep for like three years. This happens to be a lot. Not that I'm so special, it's just the combination of things that I've, I've done, just like there's a combination that can create the problem, the combination can be also created to uncreate. And the uncreation is very much a part of the quantum healing. It's the dissolution, the erasure, the negation of what I call polarity. Polarity. Polarity is another word for karma. Okay. Polarity is another word for karma. What does polarity mean? Well, if you're holding a charge around something, then it's going to affect you. So if we're upset because some girl dumped us when we were 22 and we're still holding that stuff in our body because we got dumped and it hurt us so badly that we just it's going to affect our behaviour. And with some people, I've seen this, their behaviours are affected by an event that's happened many years ago. Particularly, obviously, events that happened in childhood. So that is one of the most formative times of hardwiring information and programming. So one of the things that I do with the quantum healing is very often, nearly always, go back and ask people questions about their early part of their life. You know, can you tell me what happened? Well, you know, what's your story? You know, give me a story in a few words. Tell me what happened. Well, when I was seven, you know, mum and dad split up. Well, when I was eight, I got bullied at school. When I was nine, this happened. Really, and then what happened? Then my brother used to beat me up, or I got abused, or that other, some other stuff. Go back to those time periods, and what invariably happens is there is trauma held within the body, in the light body. And some people come to me and they say, but you know, I've had so much therapy about these issues, and I feel I've got it sorted now. I thought, oh, that's great. But often they have it mentally sorted, or they have some degree of emotional balance around an issue. But invariably, from my experience, that issue is still held within the physical body. It's like a charge held in the cells. And people say, but it doesn't matter, Simon, because, you know, every seven years all the cells change anyway. I say it doesn't work like that though, because the new cells take on the old cells' information. And if you don't believe me, what's that scar on your leg? When, you, when did that happen to you? When well, I fell out of school when I was five. How old are you now? I'm 45. Well, that's 40 years, right? That scar's still on your leg. Why is that then? Because the new cells are taking on the old cells' information. So, funnily enough, somewhat ironically, some people come to me for like your physical scars. And I do use the light therapy as a, to, to actually remove the physical scars, which is quite effective at doing. Why? Because the light therapy is just another quantum modality that I use in my quantum combination. Uh, and what it actually does is it neutralizes 
the charge. There's a certain way that I do it. It neutralizes the charge or inflammation that is, has been accrued in the body. So the work that I do is works on a physical scale, but it also works on the whole light body as well. And this is some of the more advanced stuff that I'm doing at the moment and that I have developed. Okay. Um, and I just, any questions actually, what you want to ask, by the way, because it's all a bit about me talking. Anybody want to say, we're going to have a question and answer at the end, I believe. Anyone want to ask anything or anybody unclear or want some clarity about anything? Isn't it danger if you look at it? Well, I wouldn't look at it directly in the eye. No, I wouldn't put any light directly in my eye. No. But it, it's, it's, but the light is natural, i.e. They're, they're, they're frequencies that occur naturally from the lasers. Violet, infrared and red, not ultraviolet, which can of course have skin damage, can create skin damage, but it's violet, infrared and red. Talk a little bit about the light therapy if you want, just, just interested in that. Light is the healer, light is a great healer. Everyone agree with that? Okay, I'll tell you what. Next time you have a cold, you know what it's like? Well, it's like, you know, it's a nice hot day, it's like 28 degrees outside. Cold goes really quickly, everybody notice that? When it's a really lovely, beautiful weather and you're awake. No, but cold doesn't last, does it, generally? If it's like freezing and it's miserable weather and you've got a cold, it seems gone for ages. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that scientifically, as we discovered. And the light triggers um, a particular energy carrying molecule in the cells and that energy carrying molecule speeds up the rate of healing. So when we operate with light therapy, what we're doing is we're triggering uh, the body's natural healing processes to work more effectively and light is the fuel, if you like, to heal. Okay? So that's part of the quantum stuff that I do as well. Um, with the tachyon, uh, sorry, the tachyon, the um, Qui-Fi machine, for example, the, the, well, I know the, the, the guy who invented it quite well and I've worked with him a little bit and he's a very interesting chap and he developed a way to neutralise negative feelings to, to create a field of neutrality and neutrality is a little bit like the quantum world well it is actually the quantum world a state where there is that zen-like serenity that peace that harmony where there's no frequency it's just Peace. Anyone ever felt that kind of state? Okay, were you in meditation by any chance? <laughs> meditation is a good way of doing it, but it's not the only way. It's not the only way. What I do really is a series of guided, stimulating meditations, actually, I suppose, in many ways, when I'm interacting energetically with people's life bodies. So I've developed ways to do that more effectively. <laughs> And as a result of that, the harmonic resonance healing system will be born. Because I wanted to find a way to unite all the healing systems of the world. To find out actually what is going on when we do. Who's done Reiki here? Who, who's, who's had Reiki? Hands up. Pretty much. Well, quite a few of you. Hands up here who's, who's, who's attuned to any levels of Reiki. Well, give me my, nearly everybody. <laughs> okay, that's great. Reiki's powerful. Does anyone know what actually happens though? A bit, a bit confusing, isn't it? I mean, you, you get the initiation, you have the attunements, you're told the hand positions. I mean, I've taught this for like 16 years. You taught the hand positions, you talk about the violet flame, and you know, you've got someone who's decent who attunes you properly, and you do the work, you pump the helium point, and hey, presto, it starts to flow. It's amazing, isn't it, when it happens? Amazing, right? What really happens, though? That's the question I ask. What really happens? Can we expand what's happening? Can we make it more effective? Can we channel any other rays rather than just a violet flame? And what actually happens in the light? How does the light body open when, 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 when uh, you know the, the serpent of fire symbols put about? How does it actually? What actually goes on? <coughs> and can those principles be enhanced, expanded, and utilised in a different way or in a more effective way? Well, I found the answer to that is yes. And from the understandings that I developed, uh, the harmonic resonance healing system is being born. But I just want to give you some clarity. Does anyone else want to use a laser there? Anyone else want to have a go? On the It doesn't matter if it's through the trousers, it will go through. Sorry, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm just going to check and see if the light is still going. Okay, it's still in. It's still going. Okay, the light is still on. Okay, hi, Captain Group. Let me make this absolutely clear. All these ideas are not Simon Hinton's. Yes, I have developed certain things and I have put them together. In, in the same way as the theory of relativity wasn't Einstein's, he just picked it out of the air and kind of admits that. Okay? The theory of relativity does not belong to Einstein. He happens to be the person who channeled it. Because he got a vibe, and his vibe was the gravity bent light. And everyone just thought he was crazy. And eventually they looked at the wobble of Mercury and they go, wow, my God, it actually does bend light. Because Mercury's not really wobbling. It's just the light from the sun is being bent by, by, by the gravity of the sun. The light from the, the, the wobble of Mercury. So that's an example. And the work that I have done has occurred as a result of me working directly with what I would call superluminal beings or masters of intelligence that exist outside this normal realm. And I have worked with them consistently now for 20 years. And my work with them has grown in recent years. Okay, so I don't claim personal ownership really of any of this stuff. My job is really as a guardian of this new body of teachings. And the new body of teachings is quite simply this. I want to end disease for humanity. I don't think disease is necessary. I just don't think it's necessary. And it may sound like a glib statement, and I apologise because I know some of you may not be very well, and you might have problems and think, who's this upstart on the stage saying disease isn't necessary? I believe that it's possible to clear all disease. And I think if we had the keys to that, then it could happen. And I'm working on those keys right now and developing them and getting incredible results. And one of the ways that I do that is something called light body technology. Light body technology is understanding that the, the body that we have, the physical body that I see or that we see with each other, is only the densest part of a much greater field. And that field, scientists have discovered, and what people, psychic scientists and clairvoyants sort of all agree, is about 50 meters in diameter on average for the average person. 50 meters. And if you're not a metric person, that's about 160 feet. Quite big. Imagine a circle. It's actually a torus field. Does anyone know what a torus field is? It looks like a donut <laughs> with a hole in the middle. It's like that. Okay, that's the field that we have around us. What I have been shown is that large aspects of our energy field are not actually open. They are latent or shut down. There are subtle envelopes of light within that field that are simply latent. Okay? And what the masters have shown me is how to activate those latent light bodies in a complex weave of sacred geometry which can dissolve all disease. Okay? They've also shown me that there are 144 light bodies within that singular field, 144, okay? And those light bodies are managed and monitored through the open heart when the, when the heart is fully activated. Anybody know here about chakras? Okay. Did you know that each chakra or lotus has a certain number of petals? Is anyone aware of that? Okay, the Anahata chapter or heart chakra has 12 petals. 12 petals. Okay. What the masters have shown me is that each of those petals manages and monitors 12 light bodies. 12 squared is 144. Okay. Each of those petals, when fully activated, okay, can transmit to all aspects of the angelic DNA of which their 12 strands not to. Our DNA has been shut down. Scientists have discovered something called junk DNA. They call it junk DNA because they can't understand why, why it's there. Simply inactive. Inactive DNA. Okay? When our DNA is activated, our light bodies are opened, we start to vibrate at a different frequency. The frequency and the levels of intelligence that we can develop and open ourselves up to grow exponentially. Okay? we can start to communicate and receive intelligence, wisdom, and information right across the universe. Okay, how on earth is that, you might think? Well, I'll tell you. What they showed me was that the heart is actually, the fully activated heart chakra is actually like a mirror. Okay, it's actually like a mirror. 
Okay. When it's fully activated, each of the 12 petals of the heart chakra are receivers okay, of the universal continuum. So if you imagine the universe being divided into 12 parts, okay, each of those petals receives one part from that end part of the universe. Now, if anyone knows what it looks like when you look up there and you divide the universe into 12, you'll recognise that it's actually the signs of the zodiac. We have 12 signs in the zodiac. Okay, if you decide you want to divide the universe into 12 parts for the sake of, of um, usefulness, it's a good way of doing it. You could divide it into 16 if you wanted to, but 12 is a good number. It's a useful number for division and understanding because it has specific types of uh, sacred proportionality within its, within, its, within, its new, within its number that aligns to the way the light body is set up. This is what the masters have shown me. Okay. So we have the heart of Aries, the heart of Taurus, the heart of Gemini, the heart of Leo, the heart of Virgo, the heart of Libra, the heart of Scorpio, the heart of Sagittarius, the heart of Capricorn, the heart of Aquarius, and the heart of Pisces. Each of those petals is a mirror of one of those, one of those aspects of the universe. And as a receptor, when, when activated, that transmits information via the sacred DNA, okay? via the sacred DNA to different parts of the light body. And I've decoded how this actually works. And really, all this work is really about what we call ascension, because it's another, those who have heard about ascension here, yeah, anyone heard about the word ascension? It's one of those words that's bandied about quite a lot in the new age, right? What does it actually mean? Okay, we change our vibration. What does that actually mean? Lots of people use these terms, but from my experience, a little bit cloudy, a bit nebulous about actually what it means. So I want to understand technically what it actually means. So I ask the question, what does it mean? They start giving the answers. <laughs> okay. What it means is this, we have a field that hasn't been used properly. It's like having a computer and having an iOS or OS X or Windows upgrade. It's time for upgrading our operating system, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we have been shut down for too long, okay? We've been diseased for too long. We've been in war and separation and suffering and greed and the horrors of the last two and a half thousand years in particular. We've suffered too long as a species. I'm sick of it. I don't want my kids to suffer in the way that other children have suffered. I do not want to see the world in pain and sorrow anymore. And it doesn't have to be that way. It's because of the vibration that people are holding, the anger, the fear, the competitiveness, the ego, just the bullshit that we've fed every day when we grow up. It doesn't have to be that way, but for it to change, we need to change our operating system, I feel. We need to change the way we operate, change the way we think, change the way we feel. A lot of kids are coming into the world now, like my youngest boy, he's a crystal child, it's obvious. He doesn't think the way that we thought 30, 40 years ago. A lot of the new kids are coming in and they just think, these adults are so weird. Why would they want to do this stuff to the earth? Why would they want to be like this? It's just a different thinking. Fortunately, the vibration of the planet is changing. We can also change it. And my job as a part of doing light reading technology is to help people shift that paradigm within themselves. And it is an energetic thing. It's a vibratory thing. And it has a set of codes. It's not just some idea change of vibration, there's actually a science behind it. And that science, I've discovered, is linked with the sacred proportionality and sacred geometry of the light body. So instead of invoking gods, I invoke numbers. Strip away the gods. Sometimes I'll do that. I will invoke gods and goddesses too. But I strip it away. I invoke pure number. Because, you know, anyone read the Bible here, John said, you know, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, right? The Logos, the power of the Logos, okay? The power of our words when we are fully alive and conquering is incredible. Ask, ever been, anyone here ever been with a bunch of monks chanting when they're really on it? Well, you know, what the bleep, 15 years ago, they, 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 they reported in Washington DC, the crime levels went down 50, 60% when a bunch of, when a bunch of monks decided to chant for it. When we combine and utilise our vibration positively, we can change reality. And what the Master showed me, we, there's a specific way we can do that 
just by invoking numbers and understanding and making the connections between the codes of the sacred light body, we can open ourselves up to our true potential through the power of the heart. This is not a mental body process. I might be talking a lot of mental body stuff, but it's actually a heart process. And that was a lesson for me to learn personally. Okay? Because I had to step out of thinking and let go of thinking. Anyone here ever let go of thinking? <laughs> okay. Tricky, isn't it, sometimes? When you want to know everything. It's about the principles of an idea. And when we really connect by the heart, we can, our heart is a map of the universe. When the heart is truly opened, okay, the creative force powers through. And it's way, way, way beyond our limited experience as human beings. So we might think we're so clever, and we've academics, we've been to university and all that other stuff. All we've done is collect data. Nothing beats the infinite experience of the universe when we step outside the limited framework of our experience and connect. And it, there's a knack to it. I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is a knack to connecting via the heart. And it's one I had to develop and learn and practice. Now I just can sort of do it. Like, when people come into me, I stop thinking, generally. I have a bit of thinking, but then I step out of it just to get the information that I need to get. Because I never used to be one of those psychic children. I've become psychic. It's really weird, isn't it? When you open the light, you become psychic. You know, I was never a psychic child, a little friend. You know, I was always just watching Arsenal. That was always, it still interests me, actually. I have to say that. I'm still an Arsenal fan for all these years. Some things never, never, you never lose, but I was never one of these, one of these people with a psychic friend. You know? <laughs> But it's really weird, as I've worked with this system that I've developed and channeled and opened myself up to, I've become incredibly psychic and clairvoyant. I'm sometimes I'm just like amazed at how psychic I've become. Like, Christ, how do I know this stuff? Because I, it's not about me. It's not about me. So when people say, oh, you're so gifted, that's rubbish. You're such a gifted either. Crap. I don't want to hear any stuff. Like, we're all gifted healers. Every one of you is gifted. So when did you get your special gift? Stop it. I, I developed it. <laughs> I developed it. I didn't have a special gift. Other than I was just a maniac. A more persistent perhaps than most people. That was my gift. Yeah, being more persistent. More, more determined. High will. That's all. Really. When we really focus and we really want something, we open our heart, we can get all the information we need. So any one of you can do this work. Any one of you could become, say, a Reiki master, for example. There's a few of you here tonight. You know, someone did something to you. They opened your light body and they activated you in a special way. Okay? And Master Yasui, when he was on the mountain, got activated by the masters in a special way. And his parampara was direct. The magical transmission was direct. Okay? It doesn't matter whether the parampara is direct or whether it's from a master to a, to a, to a pupil. It doesn't matter. It's the potential in all of us is here. Some of us will get activated by others, some of us will just get instantly activated. There's a lot more of the latter at the moment. What I'm trying to share with you and encourage you to understand is that all of you are special. All of you have great potential. All of you can operate and work with your light body. And this work is becoming more and more revealed. And there's, you know, there's always one or two people who get it first. It's the nature of it, like anything. You know, everything has started, someone has got a little bit of information and run, run with it a bit and then the next person's run with it and that's how we have the modern technology of today. It wasn't one person who thought about it. It was a whole series of events that have managed and, and unfolded and it's the same with the healing technology that I'm working with and developing. It's our natural divine birthright. That divine birthright has been subjugated. We have been pressed down Okay, I'm not into blame game here, it's just the reality of the last couple of thousand years. The patriarchal domination, you know, the dark forces, whatever you want to call them. I don't want to blame anybody, I take personal responsibility for my own life and my own experience. However, historically, I can see there's a lot of rubbish gone down. And I think what's really happening on the planet now is people are waking up. People are waking up to their true nature and their true power. And the more that people like this gather in a group, and go outside with the illuminated idea that we can change things, the faster and more quickly those changes will manifest. And so my light body technology is really about helping people actively open their fields so they can be more effective in 
transmitting and receiving information. And that, I have to say, is done by an open heart connection. It's not done by thinking, it's done by feeling. But yes, there are activations. We do live in a universe that is run by laws. The universe has laws. It's not just some weird thing, it has laws. There is structure to this universe, not just the physical universe, but the etheric universe has its own structure. The other subtle delineations of light and dimensions have their own structure and interplay, and they have their own keys to access in them. And we can have that access by opening our own heart centers and connecting with that which is beyond, that which is the divine within ourselves. Okay, thank you very much. the team makers there a bit silent. <laughs> you six minutes. People who are here obviously always are meant to be here to meet the other people who are here. Yeah. It always works out like that. Yeah. Love it. So we're going to do um, a bit of a more question and answer uh, with Simon and a bit of a meditation at the end, Simon tells me. Yeah, you a little bit of a taste of what it's all about. So um, we, we'll be recording again. Uh, so John, you all set up? Ready to go? Mm -hmm. We're ready to go? Fine. Right. Over to you, Simon. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Enjoyed that tea and coffee. And cake. So, I'm back uh, talking about quantum healing, light body technology, and hope you enjoyed the little intro I did. Um, but now we've got a chance for people to ask some questions. If anyone's got any questions, I thought we'd also have a little taster and do a meditation as well um, with the light body. So first of all, any questions, anyone? Um, do you have to be a vegetarian? Like, I'm sorry, am I a vegetarian? No, doesn't one have to be a vegetarian to benefit it more? Okay, that's a good question. I'm going to give you my own answer of my own personal experience. I am not a vegetarian. However, I will tell you this. In the last year, I've cut down meat considerably from my diet. So I probably have meat about once a week now, maximum. Um, I eat fish probably every two or three days. So most of my diet is vegetables and superfoods. What I've found by cutting out meat, which is, tends to be quite heavy, often filled with hormones, and it's also got off to the pain of the animal in as well, my quality of my channeling has gone through the roof as a result of changing my nutrition. However, I'm very wary of projecting and saying one thing is right and one thing is wrong. I happen to be an O positive blood type. And so, you know, the, 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 I'm told that I'm one of the hunter-gatherer types. So, you know, for me, having meat once a week, I don't have a problem with it per se. I don't like the bad treatment of animals, so I do tend to be quite careful about what I eat and uh, I don't like the intense factory farming methods, I'm very against that. But I personally am not against the idea of eating animals per se. I don't think it's anything it's inherently wrong in it, personally. Uh, but I do find that having less meat improves the quality of my channeling. So that's my experience. I will say, like anything in life, look what you fill your life with. I'll give you an example. I don't really watch TV. I don't want to fill my life with the rubbish. I don't really watch the news. I'll peruse the news very, very briefly, perhaps on the website, but I don't want to like fill my life and mind with toxic stuff controlled by somebody else. Similarly with food, I don't want to eat rubbish food, so I don't have McDonald's, I don't have Kentucky, but I don't have any of that rubbish. I just don't eat crap food, I just don't want it. You know, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but generally speaking, I've cut that stuff out, and the quality of my life has improved hugely as a result of detoxifying myself from negative people, negative food, you know, um, and, and negative environmental situations. Okay? Okay, thank you. Anybody else would like to know any question about the light body or quantum healing? Uh, yes? Psychic surgery. Psychic surgery? Well, I didn't even mention psychic surgery in my talk. You must be psychic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am a psychic surgeon. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of a funny one because I never planned to be a psychic surgeon. I never sort of, when it was my choice of 13 class at school, I never said, when I grow up, I want to be a psychic surgeon or a light body technologist. I'm sure that would have got a few laughs. I mean, I wasn't very good at getting laughs at school, if I remember. Uh, but I am a psychic surgeon. Um, 
And like a lot of things, people say, how did it start? Well, I don't really quite know, but I suppose if I track it back, it started when I was, you know, I used to do healing, and then I sort of worked on people's light bodies, and then I sort of noticed certain things. When you get out of head into heart, I sort of notice things that are sometimes stuck in people. And I can look at anybody on a tube now, or a train, and I can tell you exactly where their pain is, exactly where their problems are, like physically or etherically. And that quality has just developed <laughs> over time, really. And now I just have a way of entering people's light bodies with, with their acquiescence. I don't do it unless they want me to. And I pull stuff out of them. Uh, threads, hooks, cords, negative psychic attack, um, you know, projections, impersonal soul fragments, all sorts of things that may have accumulated in people's light bodies on their travels. I clean people up. And um, it's quite good fun, actually. Because a lot of people can actually see the thread. When I pull, them, pull stuff out of people, they can actually see the threads. Often people have never seen those kind of things before. You know? So, yeah, I do psychic surgery. <laughs> May I ask, is that what, do you work with your own etheric hand to remove anything from the individual? I don't know about my etheric hand, I use my own hand. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just work energetically. Um, no. Yeah, I'm not being facetious. I just work energetically, so I can just walk into a situation and start putting stuff out of people. I just look and I just, I'm not, I'm not always that cognitive about how I'm doing it. I just know what to do. One of the things that I will say that I've developed is the way that I work psychically with people on, on a surgery level is I enter their field by getting, building hyper rapport, what I call hyper rapport with them. So I can look at somebody and I actually, it sounds strange, but I actually, or from a frequency level, I actually become them. And this creates a kind of an unusual intimacy, actually. Uh, because I suppose, in a way, that's the only thing I can compare it to. When you're very intimate with someone, I don't necessarily mean having sex with them, but just intimate with a lover or a partner or a child who's your child, you know, when you're intimate, you have that closeness. There's a kind of a vibrational link when you trust somebody, okay, and you feel like. So what I, I do is I can get that, very, I have a, I've developed a knack of getting that feeling very quickly with a client. And even somebody I don't know, I can just, I have an ability to, or I've developed an ability, developed an ability to gain uh, a, a psychic rapport with them very fast. By doing that, it enables me to then, to then access their field in an unusual way. And by doing that, I can then clean them. Okay. Sort of gives me a key into their light body. Um, and I've never, as I said, no one's taught me it. It's just something that I've developed over time. <laughs> no problem. Well, I always ask permission, yeah? Unless I'm at a show, of course. One time at a show, it's quite funny. I was, um, it always gets a crowd when I do the psychic surgery. You know, I always, people just love seeing it work, you know? And uh, I got a phone call from some woman one time, and she said to me, she said, I, she said, an extraordinary thing happened to me. She said, I saw you at this show. And I couldn't believe that you were putting putting stuff out of people. And I actually saw these threads coming out of somebody. And I was like, amazed. I've never seen anything like it before. She said, well, I was too shy to come and see you. But, you know, if I come to see you at your clinic, you know, will you come and pull threads out of me? I said, darling, it's three. I'll just pull tomorrow. And you can't pull threads out of you. So she came and I pulled threads out of her. And she was cleaned up. It was, it was funny. So, yeah, it is a funny thing. And... Um, but, you know, it's just energy. It's like, you know, people say, what is it? What is this stuff you're putting out? What is it? What is it? Well, it's all sorts of things. It's like I try and explain. It's like, you know, if you go out, you know, just, just physically, you go to London all day, you're wearing a white suit, you know, chances are, you know, at the end, that'd be a bit grubby. You don't ask, you know, what is that dirt? What is it? What is it? You're going to have a shower, you put your, your, your suit in the dry cleaners. And it's the same with the light body. On our travels, in our interactions, we are likely to get somewhat sullied along the path. A bit dirty, a bit grubby, so we have to clean ourselves. I clean people inside and out. And if they don't see me, or if, even if they do see me, I encourage them to, you know, to have a deep, strong Himalayan salt bath at least once a week. Or if you can't get Himalayan salt, get some salt. That really does purify the light body, as well as the physical. Detoxes you etherically as well as actually physically. And a clean light body, Free of attachments, um, you know, is, is, is a light body that is going to be connected more fluidly to the infinite intelligence. 
When we're clear and open and pure, we're going to get the information that we need. We're going to be healthy and happy. You know, a lot of people have... I mean, I can walk down the street and I'll see people. And I'll just... Like yesterday, I was walking past a Hilton in Paddington and I just saw this guy and I just knew the ele ele negative elementals in him because he was so angry. I could see where they were operating through it. You know, and look at his face, his spine was so mad. You know, and, and negative elemental forces, you know, when they, when they go in somebody and somebody doesn't look after themselves, you know, they can really take home and make people very angry. I know because I was one of those people. I was one of those people. I had a predisposition to being, um, I wouldn't say possessed, but certainly uh, empathically connected to all sorts of things. So if anyone here is, has an empathic nature, I know there's a few of you here like that, the danger, of course, of having an empathic nature is that we can get polluted by other stuff. So it's very important to keep yourself clean. So I get, funnily enough, I get a lot of psychics, a huge amount of clients of mine, the psychics and mediums and healers. A lot of those people come to me to get cleaned up. Uh, because they're working psychically and they know that if they, you know, if they want a proper, proper spring clean, they'll come to, <laughs> come to light the <laughs> revolution because they will definitely get it. And I clean them up and I help them out and I get them back on track. Okay? Awesome. Yeah, sure. When you clean the park, mm -hmm. where do you throw the garbage then? <laughs> In the sewer, <laughs> the they incinerate it. Well, that's well, that's our class if it goes down the sewer. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. I mean, People who come to where I work, they will tell you that my, the energy of the place that I work is very, very clear. Would you say that, Tim? Correct. I know you come there quite often. It's very clear, and I do a number of things to keep it clear. I open the windows regularly. I'm continually burning all different types of oils and incense to purify the energy. I have candles burning continuously also, all night and all day, but not all night, but all day when I'm working. So it clears the etheric <coughs> out. I also always washing my own hands. And also, I have different people, you know, that sometimes will clear me. Like, you know, if I, if I feel I have an attachment, you know, I'll call my friend up, Teresa, because she's so brilliant at clearing attachments. And she will just, like, clear me like that from a distance. Uh, sometimes I need help, too. You know, we know no one's perfect. So, um, but I, you know, I'm very, very stringent because of the job that I do to keep myself clear and keep the place clear. Also, I use the uh, Wi-Fi machine, which creates a certain type of frequency in the house. I have lots of tachyon discs, tachyon bars, I have a geomac, I have loads and loads of stuff going on to keep the space really clear. Occasionally it does get polluted, but I can generally sort it out really fast. And I find that when you do lots of healing work and lots of good positive work, it does keep the space clear as well. Mm. You know, and if you go somewhere where there's lots of negativity, you know how it can also go the other way. So there's lots of positive stuff, plus I work with masters and spirits, really positive ascended beings that work to help, uh, you know, work through me and keep me clear as well. So it's a combination of different factors. <laughs> Would you say as a general term, Simon, when you're removing uh, energy, that it can be channeled into the, just into the earth, into, into the planet, where it can be recycled? Yes, Tim, I think that, that there is a lot of that goes on as well. Yes. There is a lot. There is a lot of that that goes on. It's not so easy when you're in an urban environment to do that. Mm. Um, but yes, through the earth is one way of doing it. It's one way of doing it. You know, in the earth, where they cover it, and nothing grows on that point. Mm. Nothing. Well, it depends how you do it and what you do. I mean, I'm using the violet flame in an unusual way. I mean, break Reiki, we all know, is part of the violet flame. But I use 144 violet flames. The light body technology that I do is the divine light of a thousand souls, okay? Those thousand souls, or the divine soul of a thousand lights, it's the same, but it's a reverse idea, is that there are 144 light bodies, okay? And there are seven main healing rays, okay? Those rays are the red, blue, yellow, green, indigo, and violet, okay? The rays of will, love, creativity, art, science, devotion, and the seventh one is alchemy violet transmutation. So when you take that, that ray and you work through the 144 light bodies, as I do, so it's 144 flames, if you like, transmutation is by nature taking something and changing its state. So it can, you can actually transmute and transform yourself. I am an alchemist. You know, I make no bones about that. You know, I teach people to transmute. I transmute <coughs> continually. You know, and doing Reiki is a great way to learn to do it. You know, it's a, Janet, a bit of Janet and John, to be honest, Reiki. I love it. 
basic raking. It's a oh, fantastic system. Your your okay. recording thing has got something on it. Yeah. Okay, no worries. It's a fantastic system, uh, and it's great because my children use it. <coughs> they, they can do raking. It's very simple, but it can be developed in advance so it's more much stronger. Is what I'm saying. I'm not in any way knocking it. I still teach it. Uh, but the violet flame is a great way to change the states of things and to change and transmute. So I believe we can, our, our own bodies are transmutational fields as well. It doesn't always have to be. I mean, I transmute all the time. I take people's stuff on. I don't care. I'll take it off, take it on. But I'll transmute it. Yeah. I'm not taking it on to keep it. I'm taking it on to clean them up. Okay? Any other questions? Quantum field, right body technology? Is that a yeah. hand up at the end there? No, I'm just... Oh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, as I understand physics, mm -hmm. energy is universal. Mm -hmm. um, if you take the energy from somebody, then where does that energy go? Because it's still there in the universe. Okay, let me just qualify when I say take energy. The way I see it is we are living, breathing conduits as the life bodies. We're living, breathing conduits. We have our own soul and we have our own personal energy. I never, I always encourage people, first thing is never give away your personal power or personal energy to anybody. But also, as living, breathing vehicles of light, which we are, Travelling through this space time continuum at this lower level of density because the speed of light on the planet is below 186,000 miles per second, right? Because that's the third dimension. At this lower level of density, it can get quite viscous, treacle like, and things can stick to people. So <laughs> it's like anything, it's like any system, ecosystem. If you look out, sorry, your name is? Michael. Michael. Michael, it's like going out into the ecosystem. It's like saying, where does all the rubbish go? Where does all the crap go? Where's... It's a sustainable system of change. The sun changed the states of things. It's like your own physical body. You know, we exude waste. Okay, we take it, we exude waste, we create energy. It changes from one form to another. It just changes form, like potential energy might turn into kinetic energy, might turn into chemical energy, you know, or, or some other form of energy. It's just moving from one form to the other. I think probably what I would say is, one of the things I do is really work to create harmonious situations. Resonance from distance. So the harmonic resonance healing system, which is being birthed at the moment, is about taking something that is sick, ill, diseased, out of sync, out of alignment, not congruent, and creating congruence, health, balance. Or taking something that's helping and increasing its vitality, its vibrancy. So that's the, the essential principle. The way that's done is done on a number of different levels. By channeling light. It's not my energy. You say, oh, you've got a lot of energy. No, I'm channeling a lot of energy. Not me personally. Oh, you're very... It's not me. When we get outside of that limited ego thinking, then things change. And it's much better, because it's much better when it's not me, because then it's not, it's not about me. When it's, mm -hmm. But that's what I encourage anyone here who works as a healer. You know, people say you're a good healer or a bad healer or that one. It's not about you. Don't get involved in that level because that's ego, that's attachment. Step out of that stuff. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm, I'm saying that there are times that I have, I have become attached to, to, to the outcome. But I've learned over the years that that's not the way to go. You know, just show up. Sometimes if you trust the higher order playing out, okay, then it doesn't matter because the higher order knows better than we do. It has more intelligence, it has a greater expanse of information and knowledge and everything. So all we have to do is show up, be aligned and do our job as effectively as possible as the most effective conduit we can be. There's a reason that Leonardo da Vinci could paint so brilliantly and be a brilliant scientist. There was a reason that William Blake was such an amazing painter and a fantastic poet. Two very different modalities, poetry and painting. Yet the same principles, the creative force they opened to by letting the ego go. It wasn't they, they let the ego go and they became vehicles for it. 
So the great artists, the great painters, the great scientists, the great poets, the great writers, the really great writers, are those that let go of the, of the limiting cognitive mind and open themselves up to become vehicles for the pure creative force to come through. And that can, will become more effective when the light body is fully opened. 144 light bodies are activated, the 1008 light trans reception and transmission are fully come behind, the 12 nuns of DNA, the 12 lights of the heart, and we really open up from a place of love, a place of deepness, a place of being, the ability to receive, or surrender to the higher flow. That's when the creative power is through. Okay. Any other questions? Wondering about the uh, just if you could pull through the kind of no doubt is actually used in your healing space, which is what you refer to tap on, but you have not been doing that, you haven't been doing that. You want to be like, you want to be like, you want to be like, you know, what's that? Okay, so I'm going to break therapy in and healing, so I do some feet, super range, and the other forms, tachyon, hip chop healing, is tap. I'm a quantum practitioner, so I use Gagan, which is a quantum modality with a lot of creative information way to both from the quantum world, also the image with Grisha and the floating from source, would go occur to how they to fluid. I don't want to, I could be down on and explain it, that works, but I said it's like Bob work and the science support. Just subtle thing, it does what energy it really does of the ball and the organizing which they feel are from the rate of and the recover of support disease. Witness. Out of the way that sense well, that is it by two, when we get toxins or lime medicines, we get stress, too many toxins or poison things happen or sweets. Happens called or negativation where into us start to like something have to go by the entropy go body sick. The system at the end so out of itself, we it starts to dis lose this what happens with cyta. Okay? And it, we have to introduce cells in us, the cancer knows this. People know this cancerous, but when everybody looks over almost, and then the, the, it takes over so when we start to redress radically, and it, that's the kind of thing that the case of tachyon can set. But it's about getting the whole system back off into its state of order, the whole reconnecting to a natural intelligence that a light body has physically, emotionally, mentally, as in returning to that state, and returning to the truer, like a higher order within the system. After doing this happen, people get better. When we're out of this thing, we go out of this it can become a spiral down. So that's tachyon. Right, I use right frequency technology, which is a very effective way, named after Royal Raymond Rife. Some of you may have heard of Royal Raymond Rife mm -hmm. in the 30s, who was a scientist who was the darling of the scientific community. Um, because he invented the, the world's most advanced microscope at the time, where you could view pathogens live under the microscope. First person who'd done that. We, prior to that, pathogens were not able to be seen live. Pathogens are anything that causes disease, germs, fungi, parasites, etc. He then had this brain wave to, um, to actually kill the pathogens with different frequencies. Every pathogen has a frequency which will nuke it, just like an opera singer will sing a certain note and will uh, destroy you know, the glass will shatter so the same principle uh, frequencies can be the frequencies can destroy pathogens so he developed a rife machine of course he fell out with the uh, authorities the american medical association when he found a link between pathogens and cancer and 15 fatally uh, Ill, Ill cancer patients all recovered that's when the pharmaceutical industry said enough was enough and they arson attacked his, arson attacked his uh, laboratories destroyed his microscopes and basically ruined him Familiar story? Well, if you it's read, still, if happening, you, still yeah. happening now. Thank you. How many yeah. holistic doctors? How many holistic doctors have been murdered in America in the last 18 months? It's a good question. No. So a lot. So well, we know all this stuff goes on. I don't buy into any of the theory. I don't really care about that stuff. I do care about the people, but I'm not going to care or worry myself about what those authorities do. All I say to people is live your truth, do your best. Uh, the Rife machine is a great way of killing parasites, so I use that as part of my um, as part of my modality. What else do I do? Um, light therapy, which I've discussed, um, a psychic surgery, and I do psychic intuitive readings as well. So I work, you know, I work with people psychologically, you know, to find out what makes them tick. Try and understand. The s Everyone's got a story and a history, and what I've I've learned over time, you know, someone's got a back problem, or they've got fibroids, or they they got IBS, or they got chronic fatigue syndrome, or they got a bad leg, or whatever it is. I try to find the history around what actually happened. There's a story that emerges, virtually always. 
really, I don't really believe in accidents. You know, so-called random events, you can actually track them back and work out certain, certain pieces of causation from my experience. And I go back and I try and clear the underlying causes of what of, of those of those things that created the environment where that accident or disease emerged, and I find that highly effective. It also gives people personal power back because a lot of people are disempowered. They go to the doctor traditionally in the West. They go to the doctor to be fixed. Okay, what I try and do is not fix people, but give them the tools to empower them. Yes, I try and help them overcome the problem, of course, but it's not about fixing. It's about looking at the causes and working out what the lessons might be associated with any diseased thing, so that the disease can then become a blessing. You know, I had, had a woman today come to see me and she explained that the disease that she had had become a blessing. She'd learned so much from what was a very traumatic and difficult period in her life. But you can, you can gain this silver lining from all these clouds to understand more about who you are, why you're here, why the polarized elements occurred in your life, or the karmic elements occurred that created those scenarios or help generate those scenarios. And if we can understand that, we can collapse that. That's what I do with the quantum healing. We can clear those things up really fast. My job is to clean people up quickly, okay? To neutralize those polarized elements within them that have facilitated disease, okay? And so the combination of quantum stuff I find works. And I just, you know, I'm guided. Once you get out of your head, I get guided, you know, I get guided to do things. You know, there's certain protocols I'll follow, get people to unwind. You get people to chill out and unwind, the body starts working better. It starts to heal itself. I'm not a medical practitioner. Don't claim to be. You know, I'm just there to help people's bodies do what they do best. And sometimes people just need a little bit of guidance to get back on track. And it's amazing how this stuff goes, how the pain can go so quickly when you give them the correct guidance and you help them to unwind. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Have you had much success with cancer? <laughs> yes, I have. But it's not something I caught, I will be honest with you. It's not something I caught for obvious reasons. There's a 1937 Cancer Act. There's also, you know, chemotherapy is something that, you know, is often encouraged by the medical establishment. I cannot possibly say, do not take chemo. If I did, I'd be locked up. So everyone has to make their own decisions, but I have had considerable success with all sorts of conditions. Um, with cancer, the main problem is the whole dynamic around it. It's a big fear-based consciousness around cancer. So often, you know, you've got, you've got the very pervasive medical authorities wanting you to do one thing. You know, your husband, your wife, your children, your mother, your father, your friends. And the fear element around that, often when one has to work on clearing all that stuff, and also to treat cancer or to help people with cancer, they see me quite a bit usually. But I can help people if they're open and willing, and uh, it, it's a supportive technology that I offer. I have to make that very clear. Um, and everyone has to make their own decisions. Some people want to only go down the alternative route, and that makes my job much easier. Uh, if people are doing chemo as well, it's harder because the, the, the immune system gets really rocked by chemo. I'm not saying it's all bad, chemo can be very effective at destroying tumors. But there's also quite a lot of side effects with that, and it's not always a sustainable uh, solution, from my experience. Can I ask another question? Sure. Um, do you have much success with straightening spines? I have had success with straightening spines. I've had a lot of success with back problems in general. Yes. What I do find is when people unwind and they do the work with them, their bodies do realign. I mean, I've seen the most, some of the most incredible realignments of bodies. I just like, I can't believe. People come with rib cages that are so distended, and then after working for a while, they just find their own state again. Mm -hmm. When we are out of sync in life, you know, our bodies are invariably reflectors of that out of syncness. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying I can sort every spinal column out, but I do find that when people unwind, the pain reduces, their bodies get back into a natural flow again. And that's what this work is about. Okay, anybody else? Here at the back? You were mentioning, um Stuff about patterns and karmic. Um, so, do you do you find sometimes with your area of work that you're actually tapping into somebody's soul journey um, in terms of past life, life between lives, certain things that are being transferred? I, I deal with that on a daily basis, Elaine. Yeah. 
on a virtual daily basis. And as a lot of people know, I do work with a lot of reincarnated Cathars. Um, a, a lot of people who have suffered, a lot of angelic people have come to me, I would call them angelic people, with a higher vibration, come often not from this planet, have suffered often torturous death, and the technology is fantastic for that. So I'm working with people's past life stuff all the time, Elaine. Thank you. Okay, are you ready for a small meditation to close? Okay. Okay. We've got the last 10%. We're going to do a small meditation. One of the things I talk about quite a lot is the verticality of the chakra system. It's key to connecting to the source realm. When our chakras are not verticalized or horizontal, we tend to be vulnerable to a psychic attack from others. Or we're always looking to garner energy or collect energy from our environment. So what I want to do is to work to, to verticalize everybody's chakra system tonight in an experiment here, <laughs> okay? Okay. So I'm calling in El Moria, Lord Kutumi, Master Hilario, Serapis Base, and Anakumara, Paul the Venetian and Sajaman of the Seven Rays to really work with I now and collect it really support this energy of reconnecting everybody to the source element, the true nature of the quantum field in divine love. So just want to open the heart centers for everybody. So I'm opening 12 strands of divine DNA, the heart of Aries, the heart of Taurus, the second strand through the second petal, the heart of Gemini, opening the heart of Cancer, the fourth petal, fourth strand of divine DNA, Really open, 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 Ipsos Agape, open, Ipsos Catharos, the heart of Leo, the fifth strand. Opening the heart of Virgo, the sixth strand. The heart of Libra, the seventh strand of divine DNA for the seventh petal of the Anahata Chakra. Opening the heart of Scorpio, the eighth petal. The heart of Sagittarius, the ninth petal, the ninth strand emerging from the ninth petal of the divine heart. The Anahata Chakra opening the tenth petal. Ipsos Agape open, Ipsos Catharos, by the same mouth of the power of unconditional love, we open by the same mouth, from the same source from the quantum field, we purify the heart of Capricorn, opening the 11th strand of divine DNA from the air sign Aquarius, finally the heart of Pisces, 12th strand of divine DNA, so we've opened the heart of the fish, the heart of the water bearer, the heart of the goat, the heart of the horse, the heart of the scorpio, the heart of justice, the heart of the maiden, the heart of the lion, the heart of the crab, the heart of the twins, the heart of the bull, the heart of the ram is open. Just really sit back and allow the heart to open in a new way. Feel the divine DNA being activated, subtly or not so subtly for all of you. And in so doing, we open up the 144 light body system, the subtle delineations of light for the whole energy field. Okay, what we're going to do now is going to do two things essentially. I'm going to increase the velocity of light power through the field, according to the spiraling Fibonacci series, multiplied by 1000 miles per second. And I'm going to vertically all your chakras. We're just going to work with 12 light bodies tonight. Okay. Light body number four is activated by DNA strand number three, which is Gemini, 3000 miles per second. Okay, that's the average speed of light power for the human being on this planet. Increasing the velocity now to 5,000 miles per second. For everybody watching this too. Increasing the velocity now, just open the heart, let go of the cerebral thinking, connect to the, na the nature of the infinite sentiments through the heart. Increasing the velocity now to 8,000 miles per second. 13,000 miles per second. 21,000 miles per second. This is ruled by the fifth strand of divine DNA vision from the fifth petal of the other heart of Chakra Leo. 21,000 miles per second. Before I shift all everyone into verticality or attempt to do that, just want everyone to internally agree with this principle if they wish to. We choose to let go of all attachments to people, to places, to outcomes, and to things. We choose instead to express only preferences in the infinite now.
only preference is in the infinite now. We choose to relinquish all attachments to people, places, outcomes, and things, to the past, to the future, to anything that may disempower us in the moment, thus maintaining maximum optimum energy in the ever unfolding eternal now. Now. Okay, at the count of three, I'm going to shift all people's energy fields into full verticality. Let you know the base, the Maladara and the Star of the Zara chakras are vertical by default. So full verticality at the count of three. One, two, three. Sacral vertical, that's good. So the plexus vertical, the Manapura chakra, that's good. Heart chakra vertical, that's good. Feel Raphael coming, really opening the heart now, that's good. High heart vertical, that's good. Calling in Raziel and Zad Zephkiel, that's good. Throat chakra vertical, Zuchiel, 16 petal lotus, the throat verticalized now. That's good, everybody, well done. Third eye vertical, Raziel and Zadkiel. Throat chakra vertical, sacral vertical, that's the one most people have issues with. Not always, sacral vertical. Now we let go of all emotional attachments to people, places, outcomes, and things. We express instead only preferences to the infinite now, open heart, out of head, into heart, connect to the infinite intelligence by the power of the heart, 12 strands of divine DNA emerging through 12 petals of the inner heart chakra, supporting 144 light bodies, through 144 chromosomes, each of which are empowered through seven rays red, blue, yellow, orange, green, indigo, violet. Will love, creativity, art, science, devotion, and alchemy is flowing through you, flowing through all the light bodies, fully activated now, full verticality, one, two, three. Increase the velocity of light flowing through the auric field, 34,000 miles per second. Open the heart, let go of all rational thinking. 55,000 miles per second. That's good. Speeding up the velocity now. 89,000 miles per second. 144,000 miles per second. Brought by the seventh strand of divine DNA, Libra. 89,000, 5,000, 34,000, 21,000, 4 verticality, 1, 2, 3. From this place that is no place, this time that is no time, we can emerge at will with a new reality at will when we're fully vertically connected to the infinite power of source, the quantum realm. Okay, they're telling me to go higher, 34,000, 55,000, 89,000. We're going out the feminine matrix now. Okay, 89,000 miles per second is the 11th number of the Fibonacci series. It's ruled by the Eighth strand of divine DNA, Scorpio, level 22, 17 million miles per second, going outside the linear third dimension now. Ruled by Pisces, level 33, Sagittarius, level 44, Aquarius, 701 billion miles per second, level 55, Capricorn, 139,000 billion miles per second, level 66, 27 million, 777,000 miles per second, Capricorn, level 77, 88, 99, for higher angelic realms now, 110. It's ruled by Scorpio, 43,000 million, million, billion miles per second. Ruled by the eighth strand of divine DNA, the subtle elements of light now. Light body number 110, fully activated. Level 121, Aries, first strand of divine DNA. Level 132, level 143, ruled by Taurus, 343,000. Million, 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 billion miles per second velocity of light going through the auric field. Okay, you take you up to level 44 now. Ruled again by the first strand of DNA, Aries. 555,000 million, 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 billion miles per second. Stay vertical, that's good. This place that is no place, this time that is no time. You can access the pure power, the love, the infinite intelligence of the Godhead. Swaying down on the wings of an angel now. Swaying down on the wings of an angel. Level 143, 132, 121, 110, 99, 88, 77, 66, 55, 44, 701 billion miles per second. Slowing down. Level 33, three and a half billion miles per second. Level 22, 17 million miles per second. Back into the linear third dimension, 89,000 miles per second. You can see how slow and viscous this dimension actually is. A rather sedentary 144,000 miles per second ruled by Libra. 89,000 miles per second Scorpio. Okay, slowing down at 55,000 miles per second. 
24,000 miles per second, 21,000 miles per second. It'll recalibrate everyone's field to full vertical flow now. Four bits of fist around your mind, DNA, Leo, one, <coughs> two, three. Open the heart, full verticality. Slowing down now. Back to 13,000 miles per second, Capricorn. 8,000 miles per second. 5,000 miles per second, Aquarius. 3,000 miles per second, Gemini. <coughs> now return back to the linear space time continuum, which we normally do to our sensor elaborators. Thank you, welcome back. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for having me. If anyone's interested in the work that I do, I do operate from central London. You've got my information and details. And I am holding two retreats this year. The Angelic Code is going to be in France from the 3rd to the 9th of July in Bavaria, France, in Cathar country, the heart of Cathar country, where I'll be sharing a lot of these teachings. And I'm also doing a retreat in Koh Samui in Thailand from the 12th to the 22nd of December. We're going to be doing an Ascension special. If anyone's interested, please contact me. Thank you. <coughs> well, thank you very much. I think you've got just a little bit of information to go away with to uh, digest. Um, I have to say thank you to Simon for tonight for a uh, brilliant talk. I mean, you've you condensed so much into a way that is so understandable. And I, I also thank Simon personally because I've been having healing for the last 18 months, which is the first time I've ever chosen. And I've been in healing for 25 years to go to a healer regularly myself. So that says something. So thank you, Simon. So thank you all, one and all. You've got the flyers for June's talk. Um, so don't forget to take one. Do, do tell other people. We'd love you to uh, spread the word so we have a, a, a really good attendance for our next talk on a, a lawyer's journey, personal journey in healing, Aubrey Rose, which should be fascinating. Um, thank you very much for coming tonight. And um, don't forget, if you haven't put your name down for our emailing list, um, we'll put it down. And it's not too late to jump in for the meditation course starting on the 1st of June, if you so choose. Otherwise, I wish you all a very good night and a safe home. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.